So, uh, hi. Um, I'm going to give a little talk today about, uh, about what I've been up to for the last couple of years, and in particular, a, a startup that I've actually just, um, uh, just act, well, officially has been uh, uh, incorporated as of about two weeks ago. So this is fairly, fairly new things as well. Um, but a little bit of background about me before I kind of launch into what I'm up to now. Um, I've been hacking on phones since 2001 when I joined the MIT Wearable Computing Group. And in 2005 when I got my doctorate on kind of basically applying AI algorithms to data collected from phones, I wanted to you know, basically start thinking about uh, applications that really affect people's lives. I mean, I, I played around with creating a little mobile app that helps socially awkward singles in Manhattan connect with each other. Um, but I figured that there's something more there. And, and, and what was happening, you know, the applications that were affecting people's lives, I mean, it wasn't happening in the States or in Finland or, or Korea, but, but you know, in 2005, you were just starting to see this happen in Africa. And so, um, so I moved there, and I've, I've been living in, and working in East Africa uh, since 2006. And I was lucky enough to hold on to a research scientist position at MIT. But instead of having my office in Cambridge, um, I lived in this small village called Khalifi out on the coast of Kenya. And, um, and I did a variety of things, ranging from working in the local district hospital uh, to being a Fulbright professor at the uh, University of Nairobi teaching uh, mobile phone programming. And uh, we launched a mobile phone programming curriculum uh, in 2007. And it, uh, and it just spread like wildfire. It was really exciting. I mean, I started teaching it in not only Kenya, but then uh, Rwanda and Uganda and Ethiopia. And um, spent a lot of last year actually training other computer science faculty across Africa uh, how to program phones and, and introducing them to the curriculum. And now we've got this mobile phone programming curriculum in, uh, in something like 13 computer science departments within 10 countries in sub-Saharan Africa. We've had literally thousands of computer science students uh, in Africa go through this, and it's generated a lot of really exciting applications specifically for the Af African market, as well as quite a few startups based in Nairobi and Addis Ababa and elsewhere. And one of those startups is, is TextEagle, so the one that I'm going to be talking about. Uh, and what TextEagle is, is it's basically it's, a, it's um, in reality, it's an idea. It's the idea of being able to enable mobile phone subscribers to earn small amounts of money by completing simple tasks for corporations um, who pay them either in airtime or, or actual mobile money. And, uh, and to pull something like this off, you really need to um, work uh, very closely with the operators. And uh, I've you know, gotten the opportunity to, I, I, I have relationships with literally every mobile phone operator in East Africa. And, uh, and literally dozens across, across the world. And um, in my other, my other job hat, I, uh, I work at the Santa Fe Institute. And I, I study uh, large-scale complex social systems. And, uh, and looking at behavior uh, from CDR, call data records from these operators, and, and using this data to do, not only help the operators understand their, their subscriber base better, but also to better inform computational epidemiological models, to be able to you know, help the city planners in Kigali, the capital of Rwanda, better design their cities based on you know, information about how we're seeing Kigali you know, uh, expand over time. This is a city that's actually tripled in size in the last four years. And so being able to start quantifying the dynamics of things like slums and, and helping them try to figure out where to put the next roads, where to put the next latrines. Um, so that's, that's kind of who I am and, uh, and what I've been up to. Um, generally, when I start these talks, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page in terms of you know, what, what we're talking about when we say mobile phones. Um, you know, a lot of people don't know this, and I really, I mean, if you don't take away anything else from this talk, I'd like to hammer home the point that uh, you know, the majority of people, uh, or actually the majority of mobile phone subscribers uh, today live in the developing world, right? And this is, the developing world is really where we're seeing a lot of the innovation. Uh, we have this preconceived notion of like the cell phone going hand in hand with the Western business executive. But there's far more, you know, villagers living in the developing world using cell phones than, than every Western white collar worker on earth today. Um, so this is, this is their technology. The mobile phone um, really is, is something that, that is theirs. I mean, they represent the majority of the users. Um, 
And, and at the end of the day, I mean, it's had a far greater impact on their lives than it has on ours. So um, it's an exciting, I mean, working on this stuff in Africa has, has been really exciting. Uh, I was in Nairobi last week, um, and, uh, and it's amazing how things have changed since I moved there in 2006. Uh, I was walking out of my hotel, and literally some guy, uh, as I was getting into a taxi, uh, put, a, put a SIM card into my hand. Uh, they're giving away SIM cards. Uh, and uh, the competition amongst the operators, you know, back in 2006 was just starting to heat up. But now it is just an all-out war uh, for market share. And it, and it makes sense. Uh, Safaricom, the, the, the incumbent operator, is projected to see something like a billion dollars in revenue this year. Um, I mean, that's, that's, that's a huge amount of money for this particular region. And so it makes sense that these Western companies are trying to get a piece of the action now. Uh, and so companies like Safaricom, this, the, the uh, incumbent operator in Kenya, they're trying their best to not become a commodity, to offer innovative services to keep people, to keep the market share. And one, of the, one such service that I just love is, is M-Pesa. What M-Pesa is, it enables um, subscribers to send and receive money using their phones. And, it, and this service has, has literally changed the lives of a lot of people in Kenya that I know about. Um, but, you know, on a practical level, it's also really helped me out. Um, last week when I was going to the airport uh, from Nairobi, uh, leaving to, co to, to come here, I, uh, I didn't have to, you know, carry around some extra Kenyan shillings. I could actually pay for the, the cab ride with my mobile phone when I got to the airport. Now, I, I arrived in San Jose here late last night, and I took a taxi to, uh, to the hotel, and there is absolutely no way here in the heart of Silicon Valley, that I could pay for that cab ride with my mobile phone. 